What's up everybody, welcome to the Amateur Coder channel. So today I need you to wish me a lot of luck because we're diving into CSCD with Flutter. And as you can probably see, I am 2 for 13 on making it work. So hopefully this last time it will work just fine. So let's get into it. Okay, so first thing you need to do is you need to create a code matching account. Then you need to connect your GitHub or whatever you're using. Connect your developer portal if you're using that. And then this I think is connected automatically. Then step number two, put it on dark theme because you're a programmer. You don't use light theme. Come on. So with the free version, you're going to have 500 minutes of builds. And that should be enough unless you're doing a lot of apps and a lot of builds. But you see I did 13 builds and some of mine ran for really long, like hour, hour 20. And I still have 300 minutes left. So you might be wondering, what is CICD? So we have two videos already on how to launch an app on the Play Store and how to launch an app on the iOS Store. CSCD basically takes all of that and automates it. So instead of going through the whole process of building, testing, creating an APK, deploying it to the App Store and all that, you just have a system that does all that automatically for you. So once you have connected your GitHub, you should see all your GitHub projects in here. So the one we're going to work on is Convene. You click this little settings thing and you get to a screen like this. So this is where we're gonna define our workflow. You basically need to go through all these settings and you will have set up your CICD workflow completely. So we're gonna go through them one by one. So first you have build triggers. This is basically what is gonna trigger your whole build. You can do it manually, you don't need to have any build triggers, you just have to click start new build. But for me, I added the build trigger of master. Whenever I push the master, this build will start and it will start to do the whole CICD process for me. One thing to note, in order for CICD to work, you have to have launched your app at least one time on the Play Store and the iOS Store. So make sure you do that first. And if you need to do that, follow the two videos I have in the description and, and then come back to this one. So this next part is the one that took me the longest, setting up environment variables for your Firebase. So as you know, it's probably not a good idea to add your Google services into your GitHub project, especially if it's open source. You don't want people to be able to access your database whenever they want. So that's why I need to set up environment variables. And then you basically encode your Google services JSON and then Google services plist. And then before you actually run it, you decode it. So one thing about CodeMagic that's really great is they have really good documentation for everything. So there's a load Firebase configuration documentation. This is the pre-build script that you need to put in. And then, so one thing about CodeMagic that's really great is they have really good documentation for everything. So there's a load Firebase configuration documentation. This is the pre-build script that you need to put in. And then how you decode it is in a really nice blog post. And basically you go to these locations, typing these commands for Mac, these commands for Windows, and it will pop up a decoded string for you that you can add into here. So once you have your environment variable set up, you're done with that part. You have your post script, you see Android Firebase. This is what we decode. And we insert it into our project root, Android app, Google services, and then iOS runner, Google services. So we're on to the next part. And that's your actual build. So I'd recommend you build to the stable channel. And I'm building this for the Android and the iOS store. And I want to do the release build. So that, that's pretty simple. Not too much to explain here. And then the last part is publishing. So if you remember the Play Store video, we had to generate a key store and we had to create a key for our Android signing. This basically does the same thing. You have to upload your key, add in your password. That's pretty much it. You will need to modify your code a little bit. One thing you need to do for Android, once again, if you go to the documentation, Android code signing, generate key store, all of that. Make sure you follow this pretty easily. If you remember signing configs, we normally just had all this stuff. But now we need to make sure you copy this whole thing because what code magic will use is this. And if you have to do it locally, then it will use this. 
See, it checks for what environment you're in, whether you're in CI, that means you're doing code magic, and then it will look for this stuff. And FCI key store path, password is all defined through here. So that's Android code signing. Then iOS code signing. You basically just need to log into your, your Apple Connect and it will guide you through this pretty simply. It's not too hard. If we're signing for the App Store, that means we're going for test flight, which is perfect. And then finally, the last two things, actually deploying it to both of the stores. So we have the Google Play Store. You will need to get a credentials.json file. So how you get this? Once again, please refer to the CodeMagic documentation. So we have how to publish it to Google Play. It'll guide you through the whole process, and then you'll eventually be in the Google Cloud Platform, and you'll have a service account key that you can use. Then you just need to download that, put it into CodeMagic, I'm going for the beta route, and that's it. For the App Store Connect, it's even easier. You just need to add your Apple ID and have an app-specific password. You might be asking, what is an app-specific password? Once again, check the documentation. It's very good. It'll go here. Code Magic needs your Apple ID and app-specific password. You click on this. Uh, to generate an app-specific password, you go to your Apple ID, and there's a big button that says generate Apple app-specific password. And there we go. Your CI CD is completely set up. Now let's try to run it, see if it works. So I have my CI CD working branch, and you'll notice it is nine commits ahead. So we're gonna create a pull request. Fingers crossed, everything works. Now I'm gonna cross our fingers and create this pull request. So once we have all our conflicts resolved, let's merge this pull request, confirm the merge. It was merged successfully. Let's check our code magic. Build for convene started. If we go to our builds, this was queuing up, now it's preparing. And we cross our fingers and hope everything works. I'm going to become a gaming channel. So that probably went by for you in an instant. But for me, it's been almost 24 hours since the last little cut. We're on index 25. If you notice, I ran out of free minutes. So I had to start paying for minutes. But we finally got CICD fully working. It's publishing to the App Store. It's publishing to the Google Play Store. CICD is fully working finally. So I want to go over some of the problems that I had in case you run into these problems. The biggest problem I faced. I think the stable channel might be broken. For CICD at least. It kept telling me that I couldn't find the file called flutter.h. Then I upgraded this to the master, and everything worked after that. Another problem you might have, it might tell you you can't it can't find your Google services info.plist. That's because when you copy paste the file into here, you gotta make sure you click copy items if needed. This is this actually copies the Google services plist into your folder instead of just copying a reference to it. Another thing, every time you have push something to the App Store, you gotta make sure you update your build number and the other one or else you're gonna have errors for that. And those were the biggest problems that I had. The biggest tip I have for you is to make sure you d read through the documentation carefully, do all the steps, and you should be okay. One other little thing, if you wanna add release notes, so right now if we refresh, You'll see release 1.02, that's the one I have. I have to personally add the release notes in here. If you wanna do that with Code Magic, you gotta make sure you have a release notes.txt and it will add that for you. All right, that's it. That's how you use Code Magic for Flutter. If you enjoyed this video, which I know I didn't enjoy making it, but make sure you click the like button. If you have any questions or comments, keep those to yourself, cause man, I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. 
Put them in the comments. I'll try to do my best to answer them. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.